I'd like to call the Capital Improvement Committee meeting to order at 201 on February 6, 2024. Uh, on our agenda, the first thing I had asked, I want to just try something new this year. Um, we go through this process and then we never know what goes on with the projects after we get them through the uh, town meeting process. So what I did is I turned around and asked um, the school department and the highway department for an update on the stuff that we were able to get approved last, last year just to see what it was. <clears throat> Part of the reason why I did that is um, in the Douglas Middle School we put the 10,000 gallon tank that they had asked for uh, on fiscal year. Uh, 24. Now in 25, they have another tank. And they both represent um, estimated cost of $140,000. So I thought it was a good practice to at least get an update on that, um, the status of the first tank, before we we put forward the second tank and find out that if if, if the tank hasn't progressed in the process. Um, because they could use that money to address some of their other maintenance issues that they have or or whatever the the committee decides to do with with those uh, funds going forward anyways um, the school did re respond back with an update for us um, the if you recall we had kind of switched things around they were able to acquire some uh, cafeteria tables and then their rooftop unit had uh, failed on the uh, high school. So they, uh, that was passed at town meeting. They, and they received the funds to replace that rooftop unit. Renard contacted a manufacturer is set to be shipped on March 18th, 2024, and then they're going to install it. Um, and they had anticipated an eight month delivery time, so. Um, I guess they're achieving that. On the Douglas Middle School, the 10,000 gallon oil tank, the project requires a site change as the new tank is double the capacity of the current tank, which is 5,000 gallons. The new tank requires a site change, uh, and they just repeated it. We have reach, reached out to a number of times to ComTank and uh, have not yet received a response. We have also researched for other vendors to deal with the commercial tanks. and have had no success. As with most situations these days, vendors are understaffed and not able to keep up with the demand. Therefore, oftentimes they are not looking for new projects. <clears throat> with regards to the most important aspect of the Douglas Middle School oil tank project, I have also been, and uh, Courtney wrote this, I have also been having a hard time getting anyone to provide what just a tank alone would cost let alone the cost for the site change, removal, installation, etc. I am hoping that I will be able to obtain that soon, although I cannot promise. It is likely to be far more than what was appropriated. I think we wait and see what the estimate is before we worry about whether it's more or less. Um, and then that is ex exactly why I um, thought about the second tank is before we go in, it's a lot of money that just sits somewhere in a in an account. We have uh, plenty of those around here on a, in our uh, carry forward folders. So I think we, what we should do is probably have the school department come in and maybe they could consider um, looking at some of the things that would curb some of their high maintenance items. I know they have a lot of trouble with these rooftop units. Maybe it's something they want to consider um, addressing some of those versus putting more money into it um, aside for a tank, especially where they don't know what the cost of the tank is yet. If we put money aside for the second tank, it's specifically it earmarked for that tank. You can't combine the two numbers to get one tank done without going to town meeting for approval. I know everybody here knows that. I'm just saying it for the benefit of anybody that's paying attention to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the update on the uh, school part. Um, Adam just actually um, joined us, so I'm going to ask him just to give us an update on the um, highway portion of it. 
and the uh, building maintenance. You'll probably cover that too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry I'm late, folks. We know you're a busy guy. I was walking through the woods. I was walking, we're looking at, at a beaver issue through the, the stream um, behind like the BFW in that stream right now. All right, let's see. Highway department, so I'll give you the update of the highway department. So the sidewalk tractor um, that was, we added a brush attachment. Do they, they all have it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the sidewalk tractor and brush attachment have been ordered from CN Wood. The original delivery date was February 1st, but the factory's delayed the shipment and is now scheduled for delivery at the beginning of March, beginning in the middle of March. Um, again, I put Article 10.5.123, we had 180,000. Article 2.11.6.23, we added 45,000 to get the brush attachment, which was a total of 225,000 for that uh, brush tractor, uh, sidewalk tractor with a brush attachment. The, uh, I don't wanna go too fast. No, nope. no, you're good on that. It just this okay. is making sure. Um, international dump truck with plow and sander. So the original delivery estimate was a year and a half from the date of order. The town sent over the contract to Allegiance Trucks in July 2023. Allegiance Trucks has not been able to get a commitment from International for the cabin chassis, so they have not signed the contract and sent it back. Allegiance Trucks is scheduled to have a meeting with International in the beginning of February to discuss the orders that have been placed. We will get an update at that time. I have a call. I have called around to other truck dealerships, and the delay is not only an international issue. Freightliner has told me a minimum of one year from the order date, and Ballard Mac would not even give me an estimate uh, delivery until they have their meeting in August 2024 to figure out when they're going to get cabin chassis. At that meeting, they'll find out how many trucks they're going to get, and then they can start talking about selling. Mm -hmm. So it's been, um, uh, as I'll discuss with other things, it's been a nightmare trying to order anything. Um, every quote that I get is 20 days or 30 days, and I don't, it's hard when you have a capital process to get a quote that's only good for 20 days. You know, when we have to go six months out, you guys are doing it now for May 1st, and then the price has to be good for, you know, July 1st, and it's not going to be. Um, um, before you jump onto that, Adam, <coughs> I had spoken with uh, Adam within the last week or so about the, uh, just inquiring to see how he was making out with the trucks. Um, and because of the the problems that he's having ordering the trucks moving forward, what I want to do um, or suggest to everybody here, if everybody agrees to it, is take all branding off of anything. It's not an international truck. It's it's a highway dump truck, whether he classifies it as a thirty thousand pound truck, however he wants to classify the truck. But we got to take the names off it because what happens is if international can't deliver a truck for him but he can get one from Mac, he can't buy it. We have to go back to town meeting. So on on our special this year, we'll probably turn around and, um, I wrote it on something. <laughs> the, um, we're gonna uh, change, take that branding off the truck. There's, uh, Adam needs uh, some additional funding for the uh, parking lot at the post office. And there was a third thing, and I don't remember what it was. John Deere back, oh, I got rid of that. John Deere, I've taken that off. Yeah, you know. no, it, it wasn't so, that. Gene. Oh, what I need? Oh, no. The third thing is the, uh, Pat's going to talk to us in a little while about the console for the, uh, <clears throat> for the cable that he uses. So those are to be three things that we'll put on the special. And then um, the other capital items are on the regular stuff, so. As, as Mike may mention, when I talk about um, Capital list. I basically said six wheel home trucks with Sandra, um, backhoe with plow, not no more John Deere, no more, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get everything just generic at this point. And it's bad. It's it's bad out there when you're trying mm -hmm. to order anything, even parts for our equipment right now. I've got a truck sitting over at a repair place and spend there two weeks, and they're, they're struggling to get the parts just from the exhaust system. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, the third thing on this is highway paving, South Street drainage and paving project, three hundred sixty thousand. So the South Street Drainage and Pavement Project was awarded to AF Amarillo and Sons. The total cost will be approximately $1 million. It came in under with the engineer's estimate. That's without change orders. That could change. Mm -hmm. We have a couple things that we're tweaking at the end. Um, the early winter weather stopped the project from being completed. We were really pushing, but uh, we couldn't get it in. 
The project's about 80%. Um, they will finish the drainage wheels and top coat of paving in the spring. We actually met with the engineers this morning. I walked it with them. A couple of washouts over the you know heavy rains that yeah. we've had um, that need to be addressed. So we're going to have to dig out some of the swales again. This 360 is that in addition to what we? That's just what you guys put into that. Nut. So that's what we already have in our. Yeah, correct. Flowing. Uh, that was what you put capital. in last year. Okay. Yeah. So you are you looking for more? Yeah, I will add for this year. I'll put in for the 360 with my new my new list again for me for the next. Next That's the 360 that we did. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> so, and I'm just asking that because I'm getting confused with it. So, <clears throat> what we had talked about as a as a committee <clears throat> was, and you'll see it in our five-year plan that we have 360 that automatically goes into the Chapter 90, and we have 100,000 that goes into the Special Stabilization Account. So. Um, We already have it in our five-year plan, so just be careful not to confuse us when you come in. Because if I see that, I'm thinking that you want, well, because no, especially no. because I'm like 363, 360, 723, and then he's got 360, and it's a million-dollar project. Yeah. So that that's where my head went real fast. Yeah, the 360, because this is just an update. It was the 360 you gave me last year. Okay, so, good. Um, I uh, me. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> um, so. Oh, I, I guess I'm forgetting or missing something. Um, if it's cost a million dollars, don't you have to pay a million dollars? Yeah, so 360 is what the capital committee is giving us. So and, then, and that's the update I gave us off of the number you gave. We have 363 from Chapter 90. We've actually had a couple years of Chapter yeah. 90 to do this. Okay, so, so you have the million yes, dollars. Have the, that right. money is actually, we have 1.385, if I remember right. Now. I'm going to round it off, but that set aside for this project. That was the engineer's estimate, so that gets taken out of chapter nine. Basically, slid over and said, "You can't touch this until this project's yeah. done." Yeah. So, okay. and then that now we're going to work on next year's project, which would be if the capital committee approves 360 from here, 360, hopefully three from the chapter state aid, and then state aid actually gave us another 200 thousand recently for the crack ceiling, for crack ceiling and yeah. that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that number now will start on next project. But that one, like I said, that money is all set aside, so that will be paid. Yeah, typically, <clears throat> typically with the 360 that we voted on as a committee to, to put in our five-year plan, puts them somewhere around a million dollars a year to, to use for paving. Um, <clears throat> they And the South Street will be done, and there's chatter about this um, culvert thing up, up the street here that will be part of the, we, <clears throat> the Board of Selectmen had, um, voted to appropriate the uh, 1.4 million dollars out of the opera funds to use for the water line here but part of that project will also be the culvert that's up the street it's pretty big it's not they keep calling it a culvert but it's, it's, it's way past a culvert it's it's a big a stone wall and mm -hmm. guardrail and all kinds of stuff that that's involved in that it's a pretty involved project anyways yeah. So, Adam, this is a continuation of improvements on South Street. Correct. Yeah. This, well, this is the same project that we started with. It's okay. Yep. Overlap from one year to the next. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, you did the done. drainage yeah. and you did the base coat, correct? correct? The drainage yeah. and the base coat have been completed. We're yeah. going to touch up some drainage. That's yeah. from issues that we've just found. <coughs> but um, and then they'll complete the drainage and then we'll do the base coat. Not the top coat, and we're hoping for May. Yeah. Hoping to get. <laughs> And the last one is the, the committee here, um, capital committee gave 125000 for a public safety and highway complex design. So I added it to my updates. Um, we've, we've been in discussion ongoing with Weston and Sampson. Uh, the select, Selectman Fitzpatrick and I turned over all the information we obtained from the Public Safety and Highway Facility Needs Committee, our assessment that we put together. And uh, we're currently working on a cost estimate location for the new facility. That's basically where we're at right now. They're in the process now of, of completing our conceptual design that we can move forward with. My concern is is not having enough time to properly uh, display this and get all our questions answered. Um, I'm aggravating everybody with this because <laughs> a lot of work's gone into it, and I'm getting pretty frustrated at the fact that I don't have what I want. Mm -hmm. um, so. 
it's a confidence thing, right? It, it's trying to get all your, your proper information and get it out to everybody that needs to see it. So um, it's obvious. Um, I think anybody riding by that building can understand that we have to do something with it. Um, but we need to, we do we need our plans and we need a, a proper cost analysis with it. Yep. Is any of it uh, different than what was on? So, yeah. So I found a couple um, things that from the flyer that actually were different than the list we presented last year. I don't know if it just. Has moved around a little bit, like the lawnmowers we talked about last year. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. talked to me about that, yeah. and um, so you, you definitely need to bring that up. I don't. Yeah. I remember talking about it, and I don't know what happened to them. So yeah. I don't yeah, have on, a like, clear answer. They were kind of got like the order was really just kind of got shuffled, and I don't know how. I don't know if it was last year's list or it was the year before. I, I kind of went through and found a couple that were off a little bit um, for years. So, like this this year, what I and what I have on here, of course, I always keep the highway garage up there. Then the 360 for road paving, the lawn mowers is my number two, um, and the loader was our number three. And the loader cost again this went up to 280. Quote. John Deere's quote says 315. That's not just John Deere that we're looking at. You know, we're going to have a general uh, loader with plow and a six wheel dump truck. To replace our other 2001 is 285 right now. That's a Freightliner pool, right? and that's the one that, that's a hero. Again, it's just generic, generic pool. Yeah, it's my FY25. Um, mm -hmm. Again, like I said, I don't want to keep going through all the years because I know everything seems to change as time goes on. But FY, like I said, the, the truck itself, I'm still trying to work on the truck. We just were able to purchase to replace the first 2001. So, uh, and that's going to be a nightmare. Um, the way it looks right now, just with everybody, it's, it's horrible. We're trying to get parts and trying to get things and get promised delivery dates, and they're not sticking to anything. Is there, is the state, I mean, the whole state must yeah, have this yeah, problem. Yeah. Is, is to, yeah. yeah, is the municipal, uh, whatever is MMA? Yeah, yeah, I reached out to, um, Combines the state like bid, you know, mm -hmm. asking like mm -hmm. what happens. Everyone's having an issue. Mm -hmm. She's like, and, and actually, one of the things I noticed was that every place that I talked to, whether it was Ballard Mac or Freightliner, they all do the cab and chassis, but the dump body itself all gets sent and they all set it to the same point, which is JC Madigan. <laughs> so, like, and JC Madigan's a year all alone, not counting delivery of their other, yeah. you know, so, but they all said it. So, I don't know if there's a lack of people doing that kind of work. And this is a backlog from that. And then one guy from Ballot says when they have trouble getting frame rings. To, so I mean everything is just another I'm gonna say excuse, but another, you know, another delay, another delay, you know, and I, I'm assuming they're telling me the truth, but it's every company, every in all the industries are having something, some kind of delay. And it's lack of workers, like the way that everyone keeps telling me in the end, but I don't uh, know. Well I, I would think that MMA would, would help out, you yeah. know, if it's the whole state yeah. that it's yeah. affecting, you know, yeah, it's, she, it's Yeah, she was very nice and she, she talked me through it. She's like, Well she's like if they never signed the contract because that was my concern, we sent it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I haven't heard you know, we've gotten nothing back and she's like, Yeah, she's like if they haven't signed the contract there's a reason. Or they should have a conference yeah. um, agenda item on this, you know, just buying equipment. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah. it's their statewide contract. A lot of times we go through to get the best price. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, it's, have Mass Municipal yeah. Association be the ones yeah. that um, bring it up because it's it is a crisis thing. It's crazy. A question on, on uh, fleet, and I, I under, totally understand why we're dropping international from. Um, is there any potential cost for maintaining? multiple brands or interchangeability of like plow blades or things yeah. like that. So you get a John Deere or a Mack truck and an international yep. truck and now all of a sudden, you know, one plow break, you can't just mm -hmm. pop another blade. And that's what basically we've always had international. I mean, we've got a, a large spread of years. So like the two, the two 2001s worked out because they're the same truck. So if you got one starter, you have one that's on the shelf of both <laughs> trucks, something happens. The 2008 was a different model. Then we went from 2008 to 2000, I think it's, say 11, and then it goes to like 15, you know, it, it's, they jump four, mm -hmm. three, four years, so they're not the same truck at all at that point. But the thing about it, the plows do match up. 
the frame is still, you know, the, the frame is the same, so that is actually helpful. The sand is going to be interchanged, so that's a good thing. If I get a Mac with a, you know, a different kind of sander, then that's a different, now we've got to stock more. So it is, it's a little different, yeah. And it will cost, and on Macs are nice trucks, they're more expensive. Freightliners are, you know, probably, right now are probably about the same as an international, um, but I, you hear good and bad of everything. You know, you try to research it. I heard that they were cheap and they heard that, you know, right now international's gotten really cheap and freightliners better. So, you know, um, I, we don't know, like I said, until I, until I sit and figure it out, until we actually get one and try it and then see if we like it. At this point, and then if, you know, like I said, they always will like to the test drive them. And mm -hmm. So that's what we do and see. Yeah, and it's, it is nice, I mean, like I said, if you can get one, one extra part, especially when they get older, like the 2001s, when I can get one starter, I can put one, you know, some belts on the shelf and I just keep them for whichever truck breaks down first. Um, but nowadays, with the newer trucks, none of the stuff gets done in house anymore. It's too, it's all complicated in computers and it's all different. It's not like the old days. So what I did is I went and grabbed the, this is from last year's, uh, last May's meeting. We don't have a truck on here. We have a loader. I don't see a truck. Like I said, I, I know I caught a couple of things that were just missing different. Because I know we had a truck on for a few different years. Yeah, it says so this six wheel dump 26. truck that you have one for the 285, that's the other 2001 you're trying to get rid of? Correct. And then the Which those are the two that you had a problem with with the emissions? Correct. That's what started that process. Yep. And then you have two at FY28. Correct. I have, I have FY20 and I have one there. And then I have, um, well, I have one next year, which would be FY26, which would be my 2008. And then, then I go to my FY28 will be the next one. And then the, the big one, unfortunately, it's a 29. It's the uh, catch basin cleaner one. That's got a whole setup that's you know special for that job that it does. You got that what in 2017 with the uh... catch basin cleaner is the. You can ask me a couple questions right now. <laughs> I thought that that was around when we got an ambulance and we got a I, catch basin I, cleaner. Yeah, I'll have to look. I don't want to lie. Yeah, I don't want to guess. So. I always guess that I'm wrong. I, I don't yeah, that's that, I'm telling you. Every time I sit here and say something, I'm just going to be wrong. It's not All right. So you have on the on 25, right? We have the post office HVAC unit replacement. Okay, so you got that's maintenance. I can flip it out. Yeah, flip over to that thing. So yeah, so 25 is the post office. I, you know, HVAC. I'm going to request an extra 50 for the parking lot because of what happened with the bids. The municipal first and second floor lobby were on here last year, but they're not on that list for like three years now, two years now. So, so I have the post office. Municipal uh, Center HVAC units. Yeah. The uh, first floor electrical. Yeah. Is on here. You got the post office painting, which would that's part of our contract. And you have the. Um, He's on the loader, but that's the highway. We already did that. So you have the uh, architectural engineering for first and second floor renovation. So the electrical and the architect, I would kick off. And the reason, and the reason the electrical. Well, uh, yeah, I put them on hold until yeah, we correct. figure out what's going on with the. Um, yep. With the water line and stuff. Correct. Because you can't do anything upstairs unless you sprinkle it. Exactly. And the other thing I have is um, the electrical. I would, I'd want to look wait till after the generator is in. Right. And see, you know, where we go with that. Before, yeah. You know, I jump into the next project. Now the. And I know this is the town clerk, it's not you. We have town clerk engineering design storage room vault. Um, it might be something we should talk to or help help Chris with it to, to figure it out. Um, do we need to do a design or should we be looking into uh, acclimating that area? 
because we could actually use it at this point. So for everybody sitting at the table, why I keep talking about this thing all the time is I witness what uh, Adam's department goes through every single time there's an election and there's what, four this year? Yeah, four this year. Four this year, so five? Four, four or five, four. anyways. Four. There's more than one. Mm -hmm. So um, he's gotta take all, eight foot tables do not fit in the elevator, so they gotta carry them all up to the second floor. All the voting machines have to go up to the second floor, which go in the elevators, all all the stuff associated with this. So every single time they have it. Yeah. Stuff upstairs, it's um, Ryan Hogan has emptied out there's there's one large room and one small room in the in the old locker room area down at the um, gym um, gymnasium. So he emptied out the larger room. Um, I think the keys have been changed down there. So not yet, well, not yet. yet. they will be. Um, so then Chris can utilize that area, even though it's not renovated as of yet. She could use, utilize it, but. Um, there has to be some sort of uh, conditioning put in there, heating and air conditioning and a uh, uh, dehumidifier mm -hmm. for the records that go in there. So instead of spending $10,000 to have somebody tell us that, yeah, you gotta take the tile off the floor and paint the walls and, and block up the windows, it may make more sense to look into having that done. Um, I think I had you, you got a uh, a quote from um, Renard already. That was what seventeen thousand or something like yeah, that. So, I don't so um, it's just something to, to think about. Um, <laughs> the money it will save for labor will probably pay for itself pretty quick, um, just in what they have to go through just to move that stuff back and forth. Um, because he's got to have manpower here on, you know, on the election night. To, all right, everybody's done now. Everybody's uh, got to yeah. shuffle all this stuff out. So, do you want me to go into my update on the building maintenance stuff? Yep. Okay. okay so, uh, municipal center roof project. Again, I went. I labeled all three, like Article 10, 5, 15, 21. They were given 345,000. Article 10, 5, 123, we were given another 90,000. Article 2, 11, 6, 23, we were given 80,000 and combined the projects, the elevator roof and the main roof, to 515,000. So the main roof and elevator roof are in the design phase with Weston and Sampson. Um, they just did, well, no, I shouldn't say that. They were supposed to do test cuts last week, but the gentleman never showed up. The plan is to go out to bid by the end of uh, the winter construction for a spring, summer uh, construction. So the end to go with the bid by the end of winter for spring and summer construction. Post office, adult social center parking lot paving. The design phase of the parking lot was paved, uh, paving was completed at a cost of 10,000. That put us at 80,000. Left for a remaining budget. We went out to bid for the paving and the bids ranged from, range from 90,000 to 184,000. That's where everybody was all over the place yeah. with that bid. It was quite a disaster. Yeah, it was huge. It was really was. And unfortunately, the um, the lower bidder was uh, uh, a very small company. Uh -huh. You know, it wasn't, um, I didn't, I don't never heard of them myself, but you know, it's one of those things where you kind of got to call around for references mm -hmm. and stuff. Either way, we didn't have enough funding. Um, all bids were rejected due to lack of funding. With the recent increase in materials, I talked to the engineering firm and uh, they projected out for the 2024 paving season that we've been advised to get a budget of 130,000. So we need another 50,000 in additional funds to get this project completed for this year. The municipal key system, we budgeted 38,000 was received uh, from the capital board of town meeting. Um, we awarded the Ironside locksmith, he's a uh, owner operator vendor here out of Douglas. For the uh, project, his bid was 10,125. There is gonna be a couple small change orders. I have you know, some handles and things that, we only replaced the locks. We left all the handles for the most part alone. Mm -hmm. There's a few that need to be replaced just because they're worn out as he's there. Um, we're over 50% complete. We work, usually we've been working on Sundays here, him and I, um, in the offices. We've got most of the first floor done. A couple adjustments need to be made. We're working on the second floor, then we're gonna go to the gym in the basement. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're definitely over 50% at this point. And he's, he wants to wrap it up in the next two to three weeks. Um, so that should be completed. So on my uh, FY25 list, I put the 50,000 for the uh, post office adult set, social center paving. 
I put the 65,000 for the post office 10 ton HVAC unit that's on Gleason Court, the one unit on Gleason Court. Um, the municipal first and second floor lobby windows, I put on for 30,000. Post office interior and exterior painting, I put 60,000, I have a new quote. I'm waiting on the new quote from the company that did it. It's held up really well. So I don't believe it's gonna you know, have to be you know, stripped down and primed and repainted. I think you know, um, we could put another coat on it in most of the areas. You know, a few areas may need to be touched up. But, um, so I'm waiting on a new quote for that, but I left it at 60,000. The municipal first floor HVAC units, those are the three units that are just down here. The air conditioner for this area, the front and the back. So they have to you know, do some ductwork changes because it's the old R, what do I want to say it's wrong, R134. The old age oh. the refrigerant. Well, it's R22 or 134. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. one of the old, it's the old style, so they've got to take, the, they change the ductwork, take the coil out, take all this stuff out, and then put new stuff in. Um, and as the building facility, this is the reason I moved this up, the building facilities committee, I believe, voted to demo the 19 Main Street. I'm not sure they did. I don't, I'm assuming that's what I heard. That's the so, old fire station. No, that's the, the, oh, that's the, the recommendation of yeah, the, the Brown, Brown House. House. The Brown <laughs> House. The Brown House. But the I was going to ask about okay. this because sure. we have some concerns. Remember, we had concerns about the towers on the old fire station. Yeah, okay, yeah. I didn't know what you were. So, yeah, I have nothing on here to take it down because it's been such a touchy subject, honestly. I, whether to take, you know, do anything with it. Um, you know what what to do whether we take it down or not is another story I, I haven't had it on here because the old fire station's been you know, back and forth a lot of times so i don't want to you know i'm not trying to make anyone upset by taking you know anything down but my concern yeah. is that it's very mm -hmm. dangerous don't go up said. there no 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 it's <laughs> not that yeah, it's those it. who go up there when <laughs> nobody's around mm -hmm. that was the concern i, I understand yeah i like i said right now we, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't want to make anyone upset, you know, by having it taken down. I, I know, that's exactly what I ran into. You know, I tried to play a, run a fine line with like, you know, I like historical buildings, believe me. Yeah. That's who I am, but I know. there's certain times where you say, okay. <laughs> You got one. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly, at certain times you say yes, it's worth it, sometimes you don't, but uh, you know, if it's part of the thing that, you know, you want to put money into the whole building and save the tower and you're going to save I it, know. then you do it. But if you're not going to do it, what do you do? Like I took the steps off the back because they were that big. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what I did. But um, yeah. And then it, there was some different. concern about um, a boarding. Yeah, the front. Yeah, the it's front. open on the eaves on the front. Yeah. Yep, yeah, correct. And I, like I said, back when Mr. Gazinski was our town administrator, I asked for 50000 and I was turned down right away. The first year I was the maintenance guy. So um, it's just one of those things. It's, it's yeah. tough. Like, I don't know, you know, again, People say, oh, the Historical Society should take it. Mm -hmm. Again, they're like, fighting uh, our they own. Do. I know, exactly. I agree with you, Shirley. You and I know we've talked about this. Unfortunately, but I'm involved with yeah, both. It, it comes to a point where, you know, and I and I really mean the town needs the storage unit. We need storage. Yeah. We, need the, we need the garage bays in that. We, you know, the fire department, the, myself as maintenance and the highway have stuff down there. And, so it needs to, we need that storage anyway. Right. And, and the other thing is here we are kind of waiting to see how the town accepts the new building for the, the highway department. Mm -hmm. And if we don't go anywhere with that. Well, we have to figure out a way to go somewhere I know. with it. <laughs> it's, um, the, as you see, in the coming years, he has some pretty big requests for equipment. Mm -hmm. And to leave that type of equipment, uh, half the people in this room are farmers. They understand what happens when we leave our tractor outside. Not good. <laughs> um, that's not the only reason why we need a new building, because it's beyond ridiculous, um, just from a safety standpoint. Exactly. Uh, we've been staring at this trailer now two years. Anyways, no, more than that. Yeah, two and a half years, maybe. Yeah. But it is. It's the equipment being left outside does hurt. It, you know, things break down a lot more than it should. You know, our, our, I think it's 2014 back and it looks like, you know, it's already starting to really show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I hate it because to me that's still brand new in my eyes, you know. I know it's already going on, you know, almost 10 yeah. years, but it, yeah. it really, should, you know, it's still new, but it looks, it's all rust and rot and, and you can see it, um, you know, just from sitting outside, you get it inside. Right. Make a world of difference, I think. So, on your 25 yep. uh, building maintenance, yep. um, the post office, you're short that money, so you, sure. you, and that's a project mm -hmm. that um, 
needs to be done. Correct. I would, I would it's ready so to go, basically. Yep. The uh, number two, the post office uh, 10 ton HVAC yep. unit. Yep. What's the status I, of that? So I have a, I'm waiting on a quote from them. The gentleman um, who I get my quotes from or not through uh, was out sick for a mm -hmm. couple of weeks. He's back now. I just talked to him this morning. I've been waiting for that. So every year I patch it and get it running again. Every year it breaks down. It's, yep. it's kind of like a fun thing we play, I guess back and forth trying to keep it running. Um, but uh, that, you know, like I said, that's gonna end up being an issue. Again, I always kind of bring this back up. If the lease is renewed again, you know, yeah. they, they bring up several issues. Of course, it's the windows, it's always the <laughs> air conditioning, it's the heat, you know, they always yeah. have certain issues, the floors or whatever. So, you know, again, it's one of those, um, it needs to be done now. It actually, the lease comes up in 2026, but it's one of those things that if it doesn't get done, then you know that will be part of the lease still the building. And that only satisfies the post office. The, post office. the the senior center is on uh, mini splits or something? Correct. They have one mini split that oh. they raise the money themselves. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. What what uh, I, I'm not up on any of this. <laughs> so we still burn wood <laughs> to stay warm but um it, it what are the mini splits are is does it cost the operational costs are less i know in the library it seems to have worked that yeah, way yeah you put more and you have small a smaller area you know you could put you can put like you have many heads i should say like you don't have it here but um the cable room has the many heads on the wall like that little room has one mm -hmm. yeah. you know it's a small unit on the ground and the head is up in the in, so you if you have to get a large unit and put two heads on it then you can put another large unit so in order to do the area that this large one unit does we'll probably have to put probably four or five of them with two heads in order to do the but how does it um weigh out on the um, price wise price -wise? well well the cost for the hard hardware and then the cost for for running it yeah so i the running it i think would probably equal out over the long run um, this is a larger unit but it's such a larger area so you have more electricity being used because you'll have so many to, to function in this one area um, right now this is all pre duct duct work in and tied right in so all we would do is replace the outside unit and then run the lines in right inside and everything else stays. yeah inside coil and the outside yeah, inside condenser. Coil and, uh, and outside outside condenser and that's it oh. um, where if you did it in mini splits now you have to run all the electrical lines try tying in all the panels and everything like that so we probably spend more money than what you would for just this yeah, it worked on the library because you had no existing duct work. We had so, no air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you had no duct work, so it's, it's more economical to put in the mini split because once you, like in a room like this, you, you put it here, you're done. Right? Yeah. 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 Where a conventional system, you have all mm -hmm. these. Yeah, like, now we've got all these every... cast iron radiators. The, uh, okay, so that answers the uh, post office. The um, First, and what I'm what I'm paying attention to is fiscal year 25, um, just so we, because we got to figure that out. Mm -hmm. um, the first and second floor lobby windows uh, in this building. That's a desire to do, not a need to do. Correct. It's, uh, I have small leaks coming from the window. This, yeah. The, uh, you can, if you go down to the lobby, you'll see it's the water gets between the panes yeah. and glass. Fogs up. It's all fogs up, and it's yeah. actually there's some green stuff growing. Uh -oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's pretty. Well, yeah, the environmental thing going on. Yeah, it's an ecotarium. Yeah, an ecotarium. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> sure. the yeah. But um, I, I do, if you look at above the ceiling tiles, right above the exit door in the gym lobby, you'll see the stains. And yeah. we, you know, we keep trying to seal it up, but it's coming through the window in between the seams yeah. and coming out in between the metal. So this has been going on. Yes long as I've been here, like I said, and, um, and we've gone through different ideas. Uh, Matt, when he first started, had me look into like bricking it all up and putting a couple simple windows for $200,000, you know, and versus, you know, um, then we said Mike and I worked together and we got just the glass replaced and that's actually the best investment. Mm -hmm. The guys like the frames are in great shape, let's replace just the glass panes for, uh, you know, 30000 so that's where we've been, you know, in uh, and that's that's still a good number. We, we recently had a conversation about yeah. this, so the thirty thousand. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 That number's held. Um, like I, I mean, I had it a little. Like I said, the number was a little lower when we went up to thirty. I think last two years ago. Mm -hmm. been, yeah. I'm still yeah. right in that ballpark. Yeah. So we're right. That's still a good number, and uh, like I said, it'd be nice to have those done, um, just to prevent the leaks more than anything. Like I said, I mean. Um, <clears throat> 
the the uh, we already talked about the painting the uh, first floor HVAC units yep. in this building are they on their way out correct they're, they're all broken or? they're all almost 30 years old at this point um, they I Renat has given me very much um, kudos for keeping them running this long they're surprised they're running this long but we have leaks in um, different areas that they, they patch and they re, they put in new refrigerant uh, but it is well past the time to replace them. Usually they, they told me every 20 years, I'm at almost 30, and we're still going forward. Like I said, it's just the three units down here. It's the one for this area, the one for the front half of the building, one for the rear half. Then the second floor is another whole year for the two rooftop units that we have left, and the, the one, there was a unit on the elevator roof for the elevator area yeah. that the school took with them. And so the unit just, the line said still laying there. And, but they so regardless of what happens with these buildings, the units would still satisfy correct. the needs of the person. Absolutely. Yep. Correct. That's the And we already talked about the demolition yep. of uh, of Main, Main Street. Street so. the and that quote is uh, is uh, a fairly new one. I asked the gentleman for a quote to demo and a quote for um in a, in disposal. Yeah, yeah, environmental was fifteen thousand and demo was fifty. And I believe you can probably beat that if you go with the bit, honestly, but I, I you know, but at least that's a good it's a good number that I know will come in at and then if you go up to bid and decide, you know, we can go up to bid through the town, um, then we can probably get a better number than that, a little bit better. But, um, but that's at least a quote for that. So it gives me a price range. Foundation Correct. hole. Correct. Foundation hole, and uh, it digs the septic up, and you get, okay. the septic system has to go. And, yep. and there's an oil drum in the basement, and it has a little bit of oil in it that takes that out. Siding. Siding's the asbestos. Correct. That's the issue. And we had an environmental report and study done, so we have all that on, on file that we've had. Yeah, this has been out there for a few years, and it's not getting any better. It's a pretty old house, isn't it? But yeah, and it's got leak. Adam gave the building and facilities a great tour. <laughs> he did. Yes. We didn't go did. in it though. I wouldn't let. No. It. <laughs> Nobody should go in that building. I That's mean right. That. When we first took it over, we walked in the first time just to make sure the windows were all shut and everything, yeah. and the whole floor is fine. You walk in. Whoa. The like, yeah. like that, no one's going in. We boarded up the outside door, and that's the last time we've been in it, you know, yeah. except when the kids break into it. Or the, the and that's that's the danger yeah. part. That with sure. the and I say kids, I'm assuming it's kids, don't. Yeah. I can't yeah. Really <laughs> classify, I do that all the time. But I always say kids, but that's just, I assume who would really want to go in there, but yeah. And you see there's a hole in the roof now, you know, it's yeah. it's fall, and it, I mean, it's, it's past time. Yeah, we did. We didn't go in that building, but we did talk about it when we were out there. And take did care go. Of any outbuilding? There's one little outbuilding building that'll take care of that, but um, yeah, we're two guys. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing with that, like I said, and there's, there's nothing on that building. So it's a good part. And we did tour the old elementary school. I didn't go in as far as the rest of them. And then we did do the little school at Douglas Town. Oh, the yeah, W place. Yeah. yeah. And how's that? Well, right at the, the, the basement <laughs> wall. Not the basement wall, wall is what it is. <laughs> hey, it could be. Again, like I said in, in the building facility meeting, it's all depends on what you want to do. Yeah, right. And that's exactly. all it is. And that's, yeah. if you want, if it's worth it to put the money into, then it's worth it. If it's not, then, you know, it's just a vacant building still sitting right. there. So it's all based on what the town wants to do when it wants to do something. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's just what it comes down to. And, and it was an eye opener because I asked Jen in community development to give us a copy of the uh, plot of what each building was on. Yeah. And the elementary school down here, now the road by the uh, post office is included in that lot of the school. <laughs> and um, there is another piece of property that it's been a uh, bad piece years ago. It, it had a lot of environmental issues over and back of the church. church. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it used to be a garage. That's what someone there. told me. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember it, but yeah, it was a garage at yeah. one point. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, what's the insurance cost? My understanding is when we're insuring vacant buildings at a much higher rate than insurance. Yeah. I don't know the cost, but I, I do know that it would be a savings for the town longer term if there is Good no point. future for the building yeah. to 
yeah. have it written. Yeah. That is absolutely Point. correct. I know I've taken an, an inspector around, but I don't know the cost on that and all that. But I have taken an inspector around just as we walk through it. Yeah. You know, and they go over whether there's anything valuable in the building, you know, which Good point. I was just thinking about zoning rules <laughs> because you asked about insurance, so you triggered another thought. But I, the town is basically exempt from the zoning rules because after demolition or catastrophe, you have three years in which to rebuild. But I, I don't think that would apply to the town itself. And the site that the old fire station is on is not, I forget it. It's very small. Yes. I know it's very small. That's yeah. tiny. <laughs> well, you wouldn't ever be able to rebuild there because you're right next to the water. Right. True. That, and that would. That's the problem with that. that, that exactly. So that's, but if you didn't rebuild it, then you could, I mean, if you tore it down and put a, a, a tin box there for whatever storage, you you couldn't do it because you're too close to the the pond. Right. Yeah. And but if you don't tear it down, then you can. Well, the building itself is blocked, isn't it? The right side is blocked. The left side is wood. The left side is the older part. Yeah. The right side was added on. The way I'm getting out of it was enough for the late for the zone. Yeah. You know, in that area, I don't know for sure. Well, but. Uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, but uh, that side, you know, and that's Matt and I've had this discussion all the time too, discussing whether you keep that little block part, you know, so you can just add a little two bay, three bay, little pack of steel building on it because you're keeping yeah. the, you know, the existing footprint if that would work. Yeah, or, right. You know, we've discussed little things like that mm -hmm. because we do need the storage. Space. And what was the answer? You just I'm talked about that. it, and that uh, was yeah, it. Was, we, yeah. <laughs> well, we just talked. Yeah, we talked about different options all the time. Again, but it's. I know it's a touchy subject with a lot of townspeople. I mean, there's many people that get mad at me when I talk about how it needs this, this, and this, and you know, they're like, "Oh, you should save it." And that's great, but it also comes down to money. You know? That's right. And everything comes down to money. So and safety. And safety. Yeah, exactly. So where are we at? And that again, I try to walk that fine line of like, you know, I don't want to come out and say tear it down or keep it. You know, I just don't know. It's again based on whatever we want to do with it. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna put all this money into it and just that's it, you know, like, or, you know, is it going to be useful? Is it just useful storage? And, you know, maybe a package still building is better, you know, but. How do you, how do you figure that out? I mean, go to a town meeting or, or go to well, an election? What was or, the question? Um, you're not listening. No, I wasn't. Not at all. Right. I was thinking about other stuff. Okay. If uh, you wanted the town to determine whether it's worth uh, taking down a building, and um, it shouldn't be Adam's thing. It should be sort of the selectman thinking of a plan of how to do this. And uh, does it go to an election? Does it go to a town meeting? Or? As far as taking the building down and adding on to it, or just taking it down? Either anything. You, All right. You, so you guys should. So just like this, right? The demo, the brown building, is a town meeting thing. So you answered your own question. It has to go to town meeting in order to appropriate the money to tear it down. Now, um, we don't have any historical districts that would prevent us from tearing down a, in a building. You better hurry. Huh? <laughs> better hurry, yeah. Um, but there's nothing there that, that prevents us from doing that. Yeah. So it's only a money deal, right? Okay. So in order to spend the town money, you have to go to town meeting. Okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah. What truly? Well, my thought is also that it takes people on town committees that have been charged with recommendations mm -hmm. or of the town administrator at the yeah. direction of board of selectmen yeah. to get some um, information on these buildings as to whether they're viable or not. How bad are they? What could they be used for? And then you go to a town meeting if you have a recommendation. But you need a recommendation. Right, and I and I believe that's what the um, April 10, 2010, what the Building and Facilities Committee was charged with when they were formed. Um, huh. I, I don't know if that's the exact, Part but I'm positive yeah. it is. Um, <laughs> The, Among uh, it was charged with the uh, assessing the in the buildings in town, <laughs> right? So it would be a recommendation from the building and facilities to say, 
Oh, you shouldn't tear down that brown building. You should renovate it and let Ellie move into it. Yeah. <laughs> it locked the door. <laughs> no, but whatever the recommendation, I just sure. I knew that wasn't a possibility, so it was easy to use it for yeah. an example. Um, but that w that's what you're charged with in your committee is, is a is to come forward in in conjunction with in his current role, which hopefully he doesn't get stay in that forever because he can't do everything. Um, but since he's charged with all the maintenance of these buildings, yeah. um, to see what what makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now the brown building is easy to to pick on because there is no useful purpose for that house. Plus it's um, that's why we bought it back. Right. And what it was 2018 or 17 or something for seventy thousand dollars i think we paid for that at the town meeting um but the, there was a bigger plan it, it goes mm -hmm. into the 34 acres out back it gives a small road frontage so mm -hmm. um before we tear down that um the old grammar school vfw whatever we want to refer to it as um we should think about what's the plan for that, mm -hmm. right? Is, is there another building that's going to go there? Or is it going to be an open field? What, what's it going to be? Um, because it is a good location, um, but it has challenges with the wetlands next door, mm -hmm. which I think we can go overcome that. But I think there could be some suitable need for that mm -hmm. without tying up, tying up 34 acres out back that you can't get to unless you go over the well. Um, but anyways. So the answer to your question goes back to your committee. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so that that's uh, Adam's status on highway and um, his building maintenance. In fiscal year 25, the uh, a couple things that he recommended coming off. There's a um, as in everything that usually comes before us, it goes up in price. Uh, our post office went up $5,000 for the HVAC units. The ones here, and I'm going off of our projected list from last year, uh, town meeting. The um, HVAC units here went up 45000 The uh, highway department loader with the plow went up uh, 85,000 from what this list what this says um, he has two large items that that will offset it so funding wise we should pretty much stay in, if if we accepted the recommendations stay in the same um, number wise I think what we should do is probably have the school department come in so we can talk to them about this oil tank to, mm -hmm. to see if that's really what they want to do kind of hesitant <laughs> It's frustrating to go through this process, and this goes back a long time. With we started at twenty-eight thousand, and then we're up to one hundred and five or one hundred and eight fire alarm second floor, right? Oh, yeah. So um, yeah. that, money's sitting, that money's just sitting. That money's just sitting there. Um, yeah. Um, Pat and I had a conversation earl uh, earlier this week. Um, I think it was earlier this week. It's Today's only yesterday, Tuesday. Yesterday, <laughs> Friday, end of last week, we had it, right? Um, that's what happens when you work every day. You don't know what day yeah, it is. I know. Um, he's going to talk to us uh, about his, uh, his needs for the uh, cable department, but the monies that he wants to um, take out of one area and use it for something else, um, Gene will help him with that process. Um, that was back done back in 2016, I believe, with the uh, studio they wanted to put yeah. up in this corner over here, uh, cable, um, which is no longer a viable project at this particular point in time. Um, Pat's going to explain it to us, but he needs a new console. He got one temporarily. He it kind of crashed on him last year and he he got he, they gave him one to they get him by but he needs a new console to, and to make this cable process work so he'll come up and do that you adam you can take off i don't want to tie Thank you up you. too long Thank appreciate you. appreciate yeah. your update adam, Thanks, adam. and Thank uh, if we have any more questions we'll call you back sounds good mr chairman i yeah i have to take off for uh, work yep um
one, two. Yep, that's fine. Okay. The because uh, we still we have a quorum anyways. Yeah. <laughs> and what Pat's going to talk about real quick is he's going to come over and join us. He's going to talk about he wants to replace that console. Yep. Um, basically, he's going to take the fifty thousand dollars that was <laughs> that was uh, appropriated or whatever for the uh, studio and redirect it to this, but it's a town meeting thing, even though it comes out of the cable funds, not out of the capital right. budget, but it's still a capital item. Yep, okay, all right, thank you. I tried to give him the Reader's Digest oh, sure. right <laughs> before he took off. <clears throat> Other than that, we're just gonna set up the people for the next time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, two o'clock works for you? Yeah, I'm available. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Uh, just launch into it. So, yep, just jump right into it and just give them an overview of. Mike explained the meat of it, but um, we have a broadcast server here in house back here. It's in the rack. It's essentially a RAID storage system that allows us to, we can upload our video content on these meetings. We upload to those, um, and it allows us to schedule playback so I can have, uh, you know, different videos playing at different times throughout the weeks, whatever. Um, we have three channels, uh, public channel, government channel, and educational channel, which the school has uh, operation of the educational channel. And they all run through this one system, um, big computer system with a, a bunch of different, um, you know, different components to it that run a bulletin board as well mm -hmm. that, you know, will come up on, on the channels in between programs. Um, and the other, uh, operation of it is to go live. So for Board of Selectmen, we go live on TV. That that system allows us to do that. It, it essentially takes everything we do, filters it through Charter's uh, head end to broadcast out back to our back to Douglas uh, Charter residents. Uh, so it's really the 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 heart of what we do mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. And we had replaced it. Um, so the current system was put in 2017, and even at that time, it was sort of a, a, an early version of this system that they've redesigned multiple times since then. So when our system, uh, we just had a catastrophic failure of the motherboard in uh, May, and we were down for about two months, and there was a lot of back and forth with this company. Uh, because you know, I was, I was trying to get them to do something about it. I felt like it was pretty early for it to just fail out, right? And they did end up finding a, a unit, probably the last available unit, uh, with a new motherboard and everything. That they reconfigured and they did send it back out, and we got it working again. So it is working now, although some of it is a little wonky. Um, our our bulletin board system is it's not exactly how I want it to look. Um, the the text. Uh, so to, to go back in time a little bit, a right after we purchased the system, the uh, cable, I mean the, the bulletin board signage aspect of the company, so there was like the video system and the bulletin board system, the bulletin board system was sold to another company. So they don't even run that. So when we tried to hook it back up, their techs were trying their best, and we were just, and, and it was designed at often, again, an early prototype to begin with. So that side of it's been redesigned by another company now for years. So it's it's just kind of like a, you know, we're trying to get it to work, um, but I, I was hoping to have another couple of years with the system, but I just don't think it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, I think according to the way that the town looks at these type of systems, I think we've got our use out. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, do you want me to go through the form itself, or how do you want it? Uh, what's on the form? All right, so I, I just explained what it is. Um, yeah. The role, I explained that. So the, the reason that I'm putting it forward is because, um, as, I, as I explained in number three here on the, the capital request form, um, this type of project needs to be run through all the different uh, parameters that a, something of this amount needs to be run through, which means you know getting bids, uh, going through some uh, product looking at the different products, having meetings, uh, and then going through that system. So it, it's not a very, it's not a, it's not a fast purchase, is kind of what I'm saying. So if we were to just kind of wait it out, 
and this goes down, and then we have to start looking. It's going to be, you know, it could be a while before we get another, a, another unit in place. Um, so I, th I, th I think may, what may help everybody is just explain the funding portion of it. I know I, I okay. gave I, a 30 second, blah, 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 but sure. if you just explain where the funding's coming from, that may help everybody. So this would actually come from money that we received, which is special cable funds yeah. to begin with. Uh, but it's, it's actually money from last uh, license. So we just signed our new license this year. But this would be capital funding that we put aside in, uh, what did you say, 2016, I think. When we put this original amount aside mm -hmm. to build out a studio on the second floor of this building, um, in, in the last few meetings that Mitch Cohen was here when yeah. we did it, correct? Yep. And uh, in the last couple of meetings, of the, ca the cable advisory committee they they sort of agreed with me that I I didn't see a, a big need or um, thirst for that here. You know, it's not a lot of producing uh, uh, resident producers in this town. It's mostly. We work mostly on the government stuff, um, the public stuff. You know, we do some public stuff, but, uh, but it's mostly senior center stuff. We don't have people coming in to make big shows like they do in other towns. We just right. sort of have never really been designed around that. Um, so I, I personally don't think it's something that, you know, considering the amount of, of money that we'd spend initially, then maintenance, then staffing, I mean, everything, it just seems like it's sort of, I think it's 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 not practical for for the people mm -hmm. here. Um, so considering that, I uh, I think that Gene can take that studio. Uh, so we had a studio build out amount at fifty thousand. That's it's still on uh, the capital books. Or however you say yeah, that, carry it's still there. Yeah, yep. carry forward. She can take that to fund this. So it's not like a new expense. It's not coming out of anything new. It's it's that it's literally taking that older item off the books and replacing this with it. So it's, it's sort of a, a swap out, if you will. Have you talked to her about that? Yes. Yes. Yep. And she seems, you know, okay. we're still sorting out the how. But, yep. Um, gotcha. she, she seems to be in agreement. When Pat approached me last week about this, it wasn't this week. Uh, last week about this, um, I immediately directed him to Jean because she would know how yeah. we need to do it properly to, to get it. I understood what he wanted to do, but she knows how to navigate those uh, channels. So this, again, that'll be something that will, um, if the committee agrees to, that we'll do it during the special town meeting with the uh, taking the, the labeling off off the truck, which um, we also, in fiscal 25, we have John Deere Loda, which will take that labeling off. Any any branding label will take off any projects coming uh, moving forward. Um, I'm looking at this. And sure. We've had conversations. You know I've actually had some, some background. Yep. This. So we're talking about a rack, but this is uh, built by multiple components. Are each of these dependent on each other or can things be replaced individually as needed so looking forward in the future could be looking at you know like can see the server here is 28,000 the playback rate is 8,000 um, are those things that clearly now sound like everything is, has been nursed along as long as it can but looking forward can you look at you know breaking this into instead of being a $50,000 um, capital project to replace everything all at once and then creating a larger project looking at replacing you know the individual components at their own individual useful lives sure where some things may last longer yeah so so like what we have now the 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 main unit with the motherboard is is essentially a new unit yeah. so um, now there are all the drives that are inside of it are the old drives that were swapped out um, and then there's we have these DVI converters, which are the uh, broadcast uh, the bulletin board unit, um, and the so what we what we replaced this past year is just that RAID system. Okay. So all of the other stuff above it, the routers, um, these two receivers are not ours; those are charters that takes the signal in and sends it out to yep. them. Um, you know, monitor, keyboard, and all that stuff. But I know I know what you're aiming at there. So 
When I was talking about how they designed the system originally, the old design used all these different parts, which are no longer in use right. and no longer available. Yeah, it was a character generator for sure. the board. Exactly. Yep. So when we talk about uh, replacing the unit, um, there's there's a quote in here for a Castus machine, which is a, a one of their top competitors in the area, and actually a lot of local places have been switching to them. And that is one unit. It's not all these various different units. Okay. So it's just a one unit thing. Okay. Um, so. So that's sort of an older design with all these various different sort of octopuses, you know, everywhere, different things going on with it. But um, which was my original thought was, hey, if I can replace stuff individually, be able to keep this brand new chassis going for a little longer. But um, you know, those individual units that they originally installed are not right. the types of things that are still available going forward. So it, it becomes sort of a which can I replace, which can I not? But I do understand that, you know, the instinct for that. Um, I think we've gotten our, probably our, our money's worth on this unit. So from a technology standpoint, the, you're at the uh, the front end of technology now instead of, not now, but with your proposal? It, it's right, the, yeah. The, it's the most we, modern technology that they have out there for this particular correct. We'd be getting operation. a new design, yeah, yeah, a brand new design for this. Um, because like you said, the other one with you was kind of almost outdated by the time you bought it. Yeah, it was outdated very, I was I was actually surprised at how quick that this design was outdated, which right. I'm not sure if that was, a, you know, from our vendor who put it together right. or from the actual company who yep. put it together. But immediately, like, a, you know, two years after we put it in, I would call them and they'd say, oh, that's the old design. And I was like, we just bought it. So, right. yeah. But at the time when we bought it, that was the design. So. But it, it moves so quickly. I mean, the stuff just keeps. Yep. They just keep moving. I mean, Have you had any comments? To, and I don't know if he has anything to do with it. Dave and Tom in there. Do they help you with any of this stuff? Or, um, or? they help me with the general hookup and everything. Yeah. But as far as the the equipment itself, um, yeah, it's that's sort of not. I mean, there's some similarities there, but a lot of it is not. So it's. <clears throat> but that's outside of there level of expertise, you think? Probably a little yeah. bit. There's yeah. probably some portions of it that they would definitely be able yeah. to help with. But yeah. Yeah. Some of the, the video playback stuff is a little, yeah. a little different. Um, yeah, the, the you know, I, I don't want to use this as a forum to complain, but the, the other, you know, they one of the reasons we bought this system is because we were able to take the bulletin board that we would play on the TV and then easily have that uploaded to the web. Right. And when they sold that company immediately, that became they they you know split it they split that off yeah so it was like we just bought it and now we can't use it but we want to use it right you know, a portion yep so I've sort of been it, it's a great system otherwise but uh, yeah the, the key thing that I take out of this is um, I trust that your opinion as to what you you need because I don't know, I have the first idea of what you need in that room. Um, and the department is self-funding. It's not something coming out of the general fund, which is important to us as a committee because we're always trying to figure it out. It's like when I wasn't paying attention to Ellie, I was looking at yeah. how all our numbers <laughs> were jumping around as to how it was going to balance out. The, I'm just a numbers guy. A, a, well, I have a question. Yes. Um, if you have $50,000 to do the studio thing, and you don't want to do it anymore. And this is only going to cost what forty thousand or forty three thousand. What I have is like forty something. But even some of the things on that quote, I wouldn't ask for. So it's probably be less than that. So what happens to is this? Is it the fifty thousand still the stuff that you don't transfer over for this project? Um, is that in no no land or yeah so yeah land? So what, what, what I would suggest is. Transfer the whole fifty thousand over so the project gets funded, and this is this becomes a gene question. I don't think the money goes back to the general fund because it, it's cable yeah. cable fund. Well, that's so what I I'm asking. That basically, once he gives a letter that the project's been closed out, that money would get transferred back into the cable. I would okay. think. Okay. Okay. Uh, RRA. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. RR? Yeah. yeah. Because. 
whatever it is. Recurring, revolving. R word, R word A. Yeah, yeah. account. But it's something, it's something because he gets that back from the cable. I don't think that becomes general fund money. Okay. That's how previous ones have. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The last time we did this, that's what yeah. um, we closed. But it. I wouldn't try to. I'm really hesitant to go with estimates because they never work. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's why we left Adam, um, the post office painting at 60000 It shouldn't come anywhere near that because we invested sixty the last time to do it right. right? It was always done. Yeah. Half, I guess. Yeah, I'll leave, the other, I'll, leave, I'll leave the other word out of it. So it was done half, right? So it finally got done properly. The prep was done. The, yeah. the a good primer base was put on, two top coats. The place looks fantastic. It, yeah. it, it never looked that good. Um, so this time around, it, it should come in much better, which will help us next year in our capital process because then they get the, the turn back money, and then that's what Gene always uses to offset our capitals before we take it out of general funds. Anybody have any other questions for Pat on this? So his, uh, if we agree to this, this is going to be something that's going to be put on the special. I've said it three or four times, but I'll say it again, that um, we put it on there. And it's, it's just it's just a process. Um, it doesn't affect our overall capital budget, but it, it solves the need that he has. I remember last year when that thing crashed, he was in a panic then trying to figure out what we're gonna do. And then all of a sudden he came up with a solution, but it's only a temporary solution. You still, even though it's, in his eyes it's new, it's still old technology that's not, that he can't get fixed. So if at any point it does break, now he's really in trouble. They were just sort of lucky that they had that back there. Right. But there's no guarantee it's going to last seven years. Right. So yeah. if it was the break, you're not going to get a fix. That's the problem with it. Anybody else have anything for Pat? Nope. Good information. Yeah. Right. Thank you guys. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. So we have. Um, <clears throat> We've already talked to Adam and stuff. Um, I don't know uh, if any emergency stuff came in. I believe I asked Lisa to send a note around. If not, I'm going to ask her again. I'll check with the uh, town administrator to make sure that we don't have any unforeseen issues that, that jump right out at us for fiscal year 25. Um, the things that Adam wants to take off, the electrical and the The electrical and the um, engineering for upstairs that'll help offset some of the costs that, that keep us in check where our proposed budget is. I have to get with Gene and find out what we actually have for a budget this year. Normally I have that already done and I didn't do it this year. I fell asleep at the wheel. Um, but I'll get that number so we know what we're dealing with. Um, I'm going to assume that we're still pretty safe with the. Uh, 1275 that we have on there. Um, highway garage, I'm going to keep <coughs> beating that up until I get an answer out of somebody. Um, and this is like two or three times a week I'm on this thing. And who are you waiting for the answer from? From the Preston architect? Preston and Sampson. Yeah. Preston and Sampson. We yeah. need, um, need to finalize documents on this thing. We need. Um, they're working on a design for something with the fire department. They're working on this, so they, they need to get it done. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted it done long before this. We signed them on in April of last year, 2023, knowing that we wanted to go to Springtown meeting with something. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been afforded the opportunity to share it with this <coughs> committee, building and facilities, anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, because we don't have anything to share. To a elevation picture. That's all I've seen, but that's not going <clears> to <throat> not the picture. It's going to change. It's, it's, so um, I just keep pushing them until we get an answer out of them. My concern is is not being properly prepared because it's a it's a big a big thing for the town. Um, it has to be done right, and we have to make sure that the numbers are accurate as to what we're going to do with it. 
and building and facilities keeps it on their agenda. Mm -hmm. And we meet once a month and we keep asking. So. Right. Where are we? And we, yeah, this we is the first. This is the item. first meeting that I brought it out publicly. Um, I'm constantly talking to the town administrator about it. And I'm sure he's tired of hearing me talk about it, but I'm going to keep doing it until I get an answer. Um, that's all, and that's all we can do, I guess, at this point. Mm -hmm. The um, so we probably should have the school department come in um, next mm -hmm. meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, do we want to have the town clerk come in and to talk about that? Uh, yeah. Uh, is everybody comfortable with um, <clears throat> if I ask Adam to kind of spearhead that with her? Because it's kind of not fair to the town clerk. To, she knows she needs it, but she doesn't know what she needs. So um, I don't want to put her in an awkward position to try to explain something that. She doesn't know how to get to where she needs to be with the. I don't mind helping Adam coming up with um, suggestions and solutions for it to bring back to the committee, but is the committee comfortable with the fact that Adam will come and explain it to us as to what, what our options are for that? That area. Yeah, yeah just yeah. for that storage yeah. area. So In the long run, it, it saves a lot of manpower. Um, and storage is an issue, yeah. right? There's a lot of um, old documents in that closet over there that um, she threw out a lot of them because they just couldn't be saved anymore. Yeah. They were full of black mold and everything else, which is... Yeah, I'm talking about climate control. I'm talking about fire suppression. That's document friendly as well. Yeah, that's, a, that's that, tricky, like well, yeah, libraries. Well, that's what, that's yeah. what we got to look at, and that's what we're yeah. going to talk about. So. Um, it may be again, again, space-wise. It's, it's beyond what the town clerk would be right. um, knowledgeable about, right? And I don't want to try to force force the town clerk to try to look it up on the internet. It's just not fair. I, I, the, it's a what attracted me to that originally because I'm the one that actually suggested it to to explore that. It's self-contained. It's all block. Yeah. It's no matter what happens up here. That is all by itself, right? Um, long term, if they needed more storage and the, and the uh, second floor was expanded, you could actually just put a second level on the top of that one, and now you have more double the storage space that's accessible from the second floor. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits to that space. The long term, the windows need to be blocked up. You can't have windows in there. Um, and then the uh, Fire suppression, uh, I don't know what they would uh, what they would do with that. I guess it's something that we'd have to look at. Uh, I think it depends on the size of the building, because I think where the library's exempt from it somehow, that you don't have to have a sprinkler system in the library. Well, it's not that. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, the size of the building and, and the, yeah. the that is pre-existing non-conforming, right? So in today's world, you would have to probably have sprinklers in, in there, but you don't have to because it's pre-existing, right? No, but libraries also, because it's all books, or a lot of it is paper, and so you just don't want a sprinkler system to happen. <laughs> yeah, you don't want them to get wet, but it's a it's a you number one fire it. source, so. <laughs> and, and, and dry paper. <laughs> It's almost like a can of gasoline mm -hmm. uh, to the fire department. But anyways, getting back to that, um, that's part of the process, right? So uh, I think if the um, committee's open to it, I'm going to suggest that the administrator to talk to with Adam and, and kind of charge him with that maybe to uh, look into that. Because if it goes to your committee, then you're going to be stuck with trying to hire somebody to come in and look at it. And it's not that complicated of an area, and I don't mind volunteering some time that, to help through the process to uh, to get it to where we need. So Personally, I think it's realistic to do it, save money. Well, it's something that's needed, right? right? So there's, it's a snowball effect. This is how I was thinking of it, right? So you have um, Gene is challenged with the space in her yep. particular office, right? Um, 
not to mention the fact that her desk looks right at the men's room door. Um, True. But she's stuck with these. Two, uh, Does she take notes or? Yeah, take notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 put that one on the small list. No. Uh, but the uh, the um, safes. If we get those safes out of there and we're able to, to put those downstairs, she could literally put a, a, a small counter counter in there. That dishwasher wall that you have a counter off to the side. Amy would have enough room to move her desk to the opposite side of the room if she needed to. Um, because it's a central location, the finance director really needs to be near the treasurer and the tax collector and all mm -hmm. these other people. You can't really put it somewhere else because you'll be paying people just to walk around the building. Right? So um, it, there's a lot of snowball effects to that storage area. Right? These closets get freed up. Um, maybe we take the IT guys out of their uh, room closet and give them a different room that's next to the cable. Who knows? what happens with those space but it storage is a huge problem around here um, at some point I want to see somebody come forward with something to um, for all this document storage that we have getting a cloud base I know the library has some um, I think there's a woman that works over there that's yeah good at. Rebecca yeah Rebecca she's the archivist right and she I mean why not be the town's archivist, not just the library's archivist, right. and put her up here in the second floor? Well, you can't put anybody up there until it's sprinkled, right? But we got to get, <laughs> and, and even if we put sprinklers up there, every day boxes of stuff goes up there. We got to figure out a way to, yeah. to curb all this storage. You can do a digital archive right. concert or something like that. Right. Where yeah. They're the professionals in a right. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's something that you're needs the to first be. person that knows about Iron Mountain besides me, and I've actually been there. <laughs> hey, yeah. I mean, you can microfilm everything. So yeah, if you can have access to it in the building, but mm -hmm. the physical records can be in there, fire suppression. Mm -hmm. fire yeah, and you ha that so. that's the you can have the copy. And they have the original there. And What's they? the cost of something like that? It depends on what you do. The harder part is the digital archive, the, the making the digital copy, and, and not only just making the digital copy, archiving it. So when you need that digital copy, you can just go into the computer and say, I need yeah. file X, and X comes yeah. up, not just having you know, right. 10,000 PDF documents, and you open every single one that they find that need. Right. Um, but yeah, and what's good about Rebecca, I mean, she, she's got a library background as well, that um, she would, instead of, um, I think the first time we heard about it was from the building inspector here, mm -hmm. of, of doing something um, with all those, all the documents. We're talking about scanners and stuff like that, but I, I, Yeah, but I mean, if you, if you have a consistent way of doing it, so if the archivist says, okay, this is the way you should classify them, to, to make it a town-wide one right. that is based on um, library rules and stuff like that. Yeah. Not public libraries, but I mean, she's been, she went to Simmons College, the mm -hmm. library school, so uh, she, she knows what she's talking about. Right. And I, uh, I used to work for a nuclear power plant, believe it or not, or uh, engineering. You weren't in charge of the button, were you? <laughs> I had to, this is right <laughs> after Three Mile Island, and... Um, oh, is that where you stopped? No, that's where I started. They hired me. All right, we're, we're, <laughs> oh, we'll hire it. her. She will be able to solve all our problems. Uh -oh. But um, it was uh, uh, filming all, all the engineers in their um, offices had, and this was in the day that you just would go to an engineer's office and it would be piles and piles of paper. And there was a, a computer that was 50 miles away that they used on 128 to um, store all um, or store all their data. Everything was big back then, you know. Yeah. So everything is so small now that it's it's amazing. And then we'd go to we were filming all the engineers' stuff, and then sending it off to Iron Mountain, and uh, that was the you know nuclear energy energy is very expensive. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons. I imagine it has to be cheaper than constructing facilities. <laughs> well, they gave up on some or decommissioning them. You know, no, I mean, as far as storage, you know, taking, you know, archive boxes of files that we don't have to physically have in the building anymore. Right. Rather than constructing climate controlled space to store those, 
It's about to be cheaper to have iron mountain store those for us. Yeah. No, it was it was great. Yeah. You know, they that that was nice. And it is an it, it is a, just a rock mountain and all carved out with these little caves in it. It's amazing. It really is. The one in New York it's anyway. They're all over the place, I guess. So next meeting I think we should have Adam actually come back because I'm looking at this uh, list from last year. And on fiscal year 26, he has highway department brush cutting tractor with side mower. That's true. Is that different than a sidewalk tractor with the brush head? That's what I was asked about last week, our last meeting, because I saw that on there. And right. We did yeah. that up to the fall. Yeah, so the he, talked, he talked about his lawn mowers and stuff. Yeah. Um, I think we have, we have Adam and we have the school department come in our next meeting. And then Adam's got to figure out, is this a different tractor? I think it's the same tractor. I don't know, but it better I, be I, a I Kubota. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, nope, we've taken away the yeah, names. Yeah, we get, oh, oh, yeah, yes. we're getting rid well, of all. Well, that's why yeah, no more John Deere went away, right? <laughs> <laughs> we've taken but I think we had them come back in, so we just we yeah. can clean up um, 24. Yeah. And then we'll we'll look at the uh, years coming in, because if that tractor's already been purchased, we don't need it. $174,000 line item on fiscal year 26. All right, we can put something else on there instead. When are you going to get to item number three? Item number three. On the agenda. Okay. So you want to, all right, so one of you, you asked about this, explain your thought process on it. Okay, my thought process is I have some questions. Yep. One, what is the BFCC's uh, uh, threshold for having a project come 50, to you? 50,000. 50? Yeah. And that, that changed? That was changed. Tell there me. There used to be $10,000 and then the state went to 50 and then the town yep. decided to go to 50. Okay, so it was just following the state's? Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and that's for oversight, right? So they don't, if it's um, if it's under 50,000, they don't have to employ the BFCC. If it's over 50,000, then they need to. Yeah, well, I, I think it would be one one thing, one suggestion is yep. uh, to have, have the uh, capital have the same threshold as the BFCC. You could do that, and I thought about this a little bit after he has said it, because we've talked about it a couple different times in, to be honest, I didn't think a lot about it. And then the last time you brought it up, I started thinking about it. Well, what's the repercussions of, of doing something like that? So you, uh, um, if you rate, so it's at $10,000 now, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. If we raise it up higher than $10,000, which I believe that's what you're suggesting, what happens is all the lower priced items become a budget item for that department. Mm -hmm. So if they don't get funding in their department, they don't have a resource in which to go to it because we could turn around and say, well, you don't meet our threshold, so we're not gonna do it. Right. Even though we've, um, we don't adhere to that, or we haven't, in the case in point being the uh, the kettles and stuff that we've replaced at the school, $6,000 or whatever they were, um, we still put that on. We didn't kick it back to them and say, well, that's your your, your problem, it's not $10,000. Yeah. Well, I, I, that would be my only concern that we I know, you, you have pot. mentioned that before. Yeah. Um, this, uh, the uh, capital committee was put into existence in, uh, I think it's uh, 1999. We we keep ours. <laughs> I use them all the time, um, and uh, so that's 25 years ago. Yep. What is the rate of inflation over those 25 years? From and I'm not going to do this homework. I think it's somebody that's paid to work here, no, which we fine. aren't, and um, yep. should uh, look that up. The other thing is, um, what other what uh, you said the state. Put their um, level at fifty thousand. I'm, I'm more. I was just thinking more narrowly um, that what are other towns with under ten thousand population, and that that's the way I 
rated yeah. up. Not your neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. It's your, the ones under 10,000. There's maybe 25 that um, you can look at. Um, what is their, uh, it, and if they have a capital committee, what is their uh, base amount for, for their capital right. committees? Somebody who's paid in this building <laughs> should do that research, you know. And um, that was, that was the other, those were the basic things that I was um, thinking about to help us make a decision. Because I think ten, I think it should be uh, the things um, that are, you know, thirty thousand dollars. The thirty thousand dollar thing here on yep. the windows. Just put it in as a um, as a an item on town meeting, not not a capital thing. Just switch your mind up. Yeah, to, but so it, it, so I would so. not. I would. I don't think I supported the pots and pans stuff oh maybe not yeah probably uh, not um the um uh, and now i just don't go to town meeting anymore because well i miss you all the time i know <laughs> but so let's just let's just talk about that real quick right so you um you talked about the the windows you use that the lobby windows for an example right that is it's a capital project um so in, in in general terms, not forget about the dollar amount. It's it's a capital item, right? It, it's uh, part of uh, one of our town buildings that uh, needs repair. If you turn around, so what you're doing is you're taking away your ability to evaluate the the need of it, right? So Chris could turn around and say, well. I need all new furniture for my room, and it's going to be twenty-seven thousand. And you set the limit at at thirty thousand. So um, he gets he gets along with whoever that sets his budget, and he ends up with new well. Furniture I think it's a, a philosophical so. thing because I mean we had to replace some um, uh, windows, and we saved for them. You know, and, and they are expensive to install new windows. And stuff. Where is this, at the library? No, it's up in um, Vermont. Oh, all right, on your personal stuff. Yeah, and, um, and uh, so we, you know, saved our money, and as we could, we would replace the windows. And, right. um, and that's, that's the way you do it. You, you, and it was a maintenance thing, basically. Um, and, I, and that's where I think that the town has to give maintenance money to the different departments to do these things. Well, you could do that. So, the I, th I think the whole purpose of the capital budget and the capital committee and the BFCC uh, was created so you didn't have random projects being done without any oversight. It is somebody good depending on what the influence is things could just get done and then you'd be like well how come my stuff doesn't get done well we don't have no more money well why well ben needed that stuff and i wanted to give it to him right so this is this is just a checks and balances and i i think that's all it is it is yes we have to go through this process all the time but i think that you don't create the opportunity it doesn't happen right so this is a little bit of oversight that that we as volunteers will uh, donate our time to look into it and make sure it makes sense, right? Um, not just like this here. Wait a minute, we got another sidewalk, uh, sidewalk plow with with the side mower. Is that well, the same see, I'm thing? I'm not in right? favor of sidewalk plows either. So. <laughs> well, I am when we're when it costs us um, over a thousand dollars a day to have somebody come in for for three three weeks out of the year to cut brush and mm -hmm. we've had such a wet season that every every single street you can't even see getting out of right um, I'm sure he experiences going on calls from the department that he works in that you, you're trying to get around the corner you can't even see try to and try to go down South Street and pull on going to Walnut I don't know what that street is right there Arch, Arch Street the, the guy's got a rhododendron the thing comes out in the middle of the road right um, but you just can't see around the corner. So uh, the sidewalk. So, yeah. Plus, well, all I'm asking is, you know, I know the fifty thousand yeah. dollars for BFCC. I I would like 
um, somebody to figure out the rate of inflation over the last 25 years yeah. and, um, and how many towns with a less than 10,000 population have capital committees and what are their, th their thresholds or their base amount is. Yeah. So if somebody could do that, then we could have a better discussion because you and I are just going to go back and forth, back and forth. No, 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 that's fine. I'm just a reactionary guy. So when you when you say something, I'm thinking, what does that affect, right? And the yeah. first thing that it affects with me is I no longer have any input whether or not he gets furniture in that office because I raise the threshold over over the top of it becomes a. Private. I don't consider uh, see. I don't consider furniture a capital item. It, it's just a fictitious example. That's all it is. It's yeah. not. Um, I don't think it's a. I think a storage item, container for you know the fire department or something like that. Not a container, but a, a garage. Yeah. Extra for extra space for right. town vehicles is 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 a capital item, but. Um, so what, what about the HVAC for the post office? Is that a well? No, I don't. I don't know. Well, I do know how much cost because it was in here. Um, I was. I'm old, so. Um, Me too. Yeah. Well, not as old as I am. No, but I'm where you didn't wor work in 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 buildings that had no air conditioning. So you know that's. But, um, I, growing up, there was a little lever that I had the 55 mile an hour air conditioning in my vehicle when you opened up the vent windows, and they don't have vent yeah, windows anymore. Yeah, I know. Isn't so, that sad? Right. Yeah. They actually worked really well. I don't know uh, why they did. Uh, <laughs> um, but they couldn't sell air conditioning if they had the vent windows, I guess. Yeah. No, I'll get that answer for you. Uh, I'll ask. I'll ask. Um, I can get my opinion just from a department head since the mid 90s um, in municipal. Yeah. Um, one thing about adding items to your budget that are one time purchases is it gets very difficult when you're talking to a finance committee or even a town meeting to say, last year your budget was 100,000, it's 150 this year, then back down to 100,000. Why, why the spike? Why the drop? Um, so having consistency in your, in your budgeting process is good. And what was that $50,000 thing I purchased? Um, from the assessor's office every five years we go out for um, uh, we, we were subject to an audit by the Department yeah. of Revenue. We bring in um, vendors to to help us with that that cost several thousand dollars. We come to the capital committee and get money for that one time even though it's a repeating mm -hmm. expense we come to here just so we don't have that every five mm -hmm. year spike in the budget without explaining it to to a board and having town meeting approve that money. Um, it's, it's easier from a department. Uh, one of the other issues is, or things, is um, extraordinary one-time purchases, whether it's a, a $5,000 item or uh, a $50,000 item. You look at the, the police department, they use cruisers every single year. We want those in their operating budget, even though they're probably a $50,000 50, $50, item, because mm -hmm. they're buying them every year. That should be part of uh, their operating budget. Mm -hmm. I think we've it is. We talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where they, I think they were in capital. They were. Um, whereas in my office, where my, you know, expense budget is is very small, and if I want to go out and buy, you know, a photocopier that's going to cost me, you know, eight thousand dollars or whatever they cost, I don't know what they cost. That's an extraordinary purchase, one-time purchase from your office. budget. Yeah. And I should come. I feel I should come to the capital committee and say we we justify that, or maybe the capital committee says no. Walk 200 yards down the hallway and use the one mail room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right. but those are the types of things that I, I don't see the dollar amount. It's more of the frequency of purchase, the life of the purchase. It's an extraordinary purchase for the department. Now, yes, I do have a, a supplies and miscellaneous budget line that has a limited amount of money. And if a chair in my office breaks its furniture, I have money to go buy a chair. If I was going to hire a new employee and needed a whole new desk, I would have to probably come to the capital committee and say, I need a whole new desk and computer set up and everything is going to cost me $7,000. Why? Well, they determined I was eligible for that another employee and I need to find a place to sit up. So I look at it not necessarily on a dollar threshold as on a case-by-case -case basis, what is a capital item versus mm -hmm. what is not a capital item. Both, like I said, for not spiking and not, and, you know, having your budget spike and drop from year to year, as well as the actual use of the project and how extraordinary of a 
purchase is it for that department? And mm -hmm. so that's most times you're going to hear me talk to the taxpayer of this committee, but this uh, my department head by appointment, and that's the department head perspective yep. on. But I'll get you that answer. What the average is um, around the the only hesitancy I have is the removing some of the oversight, right? and I think that's what it, the ten thousand dollar limit provides is a little bit of oversight. So then you have consistency uh, through the budgets, but also responsibility within the departments. Uh, if you if you raise it too much, is you're you're gonna it's gonna be a situation where you're gonna tax the uh, either the administrator or the finance director with policing what a department wants and I think that's the the function that we serve is, is not only do we uh, we approve it but we're kind of policing what what the wants and desires are um, that's why I asked Adam are these necessary right? like the lobby windows I don't think that it's necessary if it something's going to get cut out of the budget it's, it's a cosmetic issue to me um, that would be probably one of the first things that would jump off the page to me would be the windows it would be nice to get them changed because they do look a little crappy but um, it's an easy target to approach where if it became Say we had a thirty thousand dollar limit, and he could get the things done for twenty eight thousand. Now we just—that's money that's going to be taking out of free cash, because free cash is what's left over after you funded all the all the department. So all you did was you lost your funding without having any input into it. But you I'll, haven't convinced I'll, me I'll yet. Get, so get, I have no, to have those a, answers. No, it's, you it, know? it's a good process and yeah. it's a good question. Uh, I have zero issues with that. Uh, I'm just sharing my immediate thoughts as to how I think about it. So, in regard to, say, windows and it's the appearance, the first thing that comes to my mind are we losing heat? Yeah, you said some of the windows are leaking. So, yeah. if the seal is broken, then um, then they're not as efficient, right? That's right? So, if you it goes by U factors on, mm -hmm. on windows, right? So mm -hmm. it's the opposite of an R factor. So, the lower the number, the better it is. Where an R factor, the higher the number, the better it is. So, if you take a, a thermal window, two panes of glass. Mm -hmm. And it's just clear glass and it has nothing else in it. The U factor is somewhere around a 55. The moment you put RE, uh, the low E uh, film on it, it drops it down to the 20s. Mm -hmm. And then you put argon in it, it drops it down even more. So mm -hmm. the answer to your question that's clear glass, the seal's broken, so they're very inefficient. Um, but it's an easy target when we're trying to shave our budget if we if we get tight on things so in regard to choices of projects i mean i remember when this the capital committee first got established it was before that it was okay which department or which group could come to town meeting with and get have the most people behind them mm -hmm. And that their project, right. whether it be something to do with baseball or whatever, there was yeah. no good discussion. To yeah. Good, what is really needed? Yeah, no, that's it's it is a valuable thing I think it is. too for the BFCC. I mean, I I, va I value this committee because we all have a different point of view with it. Uh, I think we have a very good mm -hmm. working relationship that everybody has their opinions, right? And nobody gets hung up on the fact that. Um, somebody says one thing it's just it's just input right we put all this information out on the table sometimes our minds change sometimes they don't but at least we have the opportunity to voice it where the other option is going to town meeting and if there's enough people there to fight for it you're sunk we, we watch it. It, it it happens on a lot of things right depends mm -hmm. on what the hot subject is of that current year 
and half the auditorium's loaded up with those people. And as soon as that thing goes through, it's like, yeah, we're gone, <laughs> right? Um, mm -hmm. I enjoy the process just going through. It. Just no, it is. It's it's a fun I, I process it, to it, watch. It's a good it thing. Is. Some people get offended by it, and and it is what it is. Mm -hmm. If you try to put the emotions aside, and it's just a factual. Mm -hmm. Conversation. If people agree, they agree. If not, at least you had your day in, day in the sun to voice your opinion. Mm -hmm. right? So that's what the whole process is about. We're getting back to this. We'll get um, we'll get those people that come in. We have a, a bunch of minutes. Has anybody had any chance at all to look through them? Um, I have, Mike. Except that I only had, I believe, two sets before I got here. Um, and then we have a whole packet. Uh, I didn't. I didn't read the October ones. I don't believe, or the May ones. All I had originally from the last meeting was the March seventh and March twentieth. Twenty-first. Okay. Uh, I've got twenty. Oh, this one. Oh, wait a minute. March 21st. And now 28. I see there is another uh, March 1. March 1. Yeah, March 7th, 20th. And there's the 21. I haven't read the 21. I've only read the first two. 21. So but if anybody else has. Oh, I see. Have you? No, I haven't read any of them. All right, so truth. why don't we do this? Because I, 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 abso you. I absolutely, <laughs> no, no, no. I absolutely <laughs> want to get these done in the next meeting. Okay. Can everybody all just right. take them so, home, uh, look through them, make sure you have no issues at all okay, with them. Set those. Um, I would like to get these approved this year on this year's process. The other thing that I that I thought about is that once we get through this, we're going to have one more meeting to try to get all the meeting minutes done, so we don't go into next year trying to remember what we said a year ago. Yeah, um, I agree. It's just frustrating. And, it is. Um, and when's the, the next meeting? Next week? Or? That's what I was going to ask everybody. Is everybody available next Tuesday at 2 p.m.? Uh, I, I, I think so. <coughs> well, everybody's looking that up. I just want to acknowledge Ben's help in the last meeting. Appreciate you. Yeah, he, was, he did very well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Good for two. Um, two meetings? All right, good. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> two o'clock next week. <laughs> uh, date is. Uh, the 13th. Okay. Hold on. Yes, good. Two o'clock. We got one more con uh, confirmation coming. Um, yep, that's okay with me. All right, me. two o'clock next week. October. Yeah. And. and um, if everybody can just look through those minutes so we can just approve them the next meeting. And please. I will read them. I will. <laughs> Don't count I, on me. Yeah. Well, I only, I didn't get them all. No, but it's in, week. It, it would be good to look through them anyways because there's some in, some things in here that's going to re, remind us of uh, some of the things that we talked about today yeah, that, that, we, that I poked in there and yeah. seen them. Um, and especially on the 20th on the back page, is things that need to be looked at. I'm going to uh, ask Al, uh, Adam and the school department to come back for our next meeting next week so we can yep. somewhat fix our uh, 25 budget uh, capital requests. And Are you supposed to go before FinCom? I'm going on March 26. I got plenty of time, but I want to get I want to get through the 25, and then we got to create the fifth year um, in our process. So. And I'll do what I can to try to get an answer out of Weston and Sampson. I'm not encouraged. Do you have a contract with them? We have a town has a contract with them, yes. Does yep. it have any deadlines or anything like that? It's a three year contract. It's a, it's a three year contract. They knew it's that we to wanted to go to the spring town meeting. I don't know if they're thinking that they have to be ready in May. 
<laughs> I wanted to be ready long before this. Yeah. I wanted to have multiple conversations on this. Yeah, so we yeah could, no, you have to. Uh, we did the same thing with the stabilization account and everything that we've, we've done, we've always put the work into it. Yep. Yeah. So we need information in order to do that. So if nobody else has anything, move I would adjourn. entertain a motion to adjourn. Did you move? I did. I'll second. Motion been made. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing as none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.